Believe it or not, by sharing this video, you can end poverty for all humans on the planet, end nuclear war and all other war on the planet, solve climate change, medical science, and all other science, and maybe even get rich in the process. So stay with me. Put away your goldfish brain and maintain your attention span for the entirety of the video because it's going to take 15 to 20 minutes for me to explain how we can fix all these problems on Earth. Uh, so there's going to be a Twitter link in the description that you can retweet. There's going to be a Facebook post that you can share. So make sure to retweet and share. And you know now I'm going to be talking about my ideas. So there's four main ideas. And this is idea number one. Idea of a programmed technological singularity. So you could say, you know, why is it even possible to end poverty, end war, and solve science in the first place? And the reason it's possible is because Earth is a singularity system. So what that means is civilization as a whole has been exponentially compounding its technological advancement. And, you know, with each new invention, the efficiency of the entire system gets faster and faster and faster. So, you know, we can kind of, you know, look at these charts. So 23,000 BCE, we see the first agriculture on civilization. And then 12,000 years later, we see housing. 6,000 years later, we see currency. 1,800 years later, we see writing. And then 200 years later, we see metal tools. So within these first, you know, primary inventions of civilization, we notice that the time between each invention has been getting smaller and smaller. And essentially what this illustrates is that, you know, after each invention, the whole system gets smarter and, you know, it gets more efficient. And, you know, so this allows the next invention to come even faster. And then, you know, this further increases the efficiency and intelligence. And, you know, this is continuously compounding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Till we get to today, the microchip and the internet are only a couple decades apart. So we can see that, you know, this singularity system has gotten ridiculously smart. Um, so, the idea of a program technological singularity is essentially the milestone after the internet. So if we look at the internet, there are 8 billion humans and they are all inputting data into the internet. And then the internet is an intelligent filtration system that is inputting the most valuable data back into the humans. So this allows the humans to learn faster because they are getting higher quality data. And then the humans become smarter and then they input uh, higher quality data back into the internet. So essentially we have both of these systems, the internet and all the humans on the planet, uh, symbiotically evolving their intelligence and you know spreading ideas. So this is essentially the most recent milestone of the singularity system. And as we can see, it is having drastic implications on society that are you know good and creating a large amount of efficiency for society as a whole. So the milestone after the internet and the final milestone in the singularity system I argue is a programmed technological singularity. So essentially what humans are doing with the internet manually, we have a program to do it. And then um, because it's a program and not 8 billion humans, we can funnel a bunch of money to make, uh, to give this program additional processing power. And then this program can become, you know, infinitely intelligent. And, you know, once it, you know, gets to that stage, it can spread its wisdom and, you know, intelligence throughout the entirety of Earth. You know, similar to when the internet, when we first realized about the internet, you know, at first it was just in, you know, where it had started, and then everyone realized it was a great idea, so we spread it throughout the entire world, and now everywhere has internet access. So just like, you know, we, the program Technological Singularity would do so. And that would be the final milestone. And then this program Technological Singularity would be super, super smart, so it would, you know, solve science, climate change, and everything else for us. So... I'm going to be talking about a method to create such a program later, but for now, let's go to idea number two. So idea number two is the idea to mine the asteroid belt and create a global universal basic income. So if you go online, you might see various articles that are saying, mining the asteroid belt is impossible with our current technology. Why? Because you fly over to an asteroid, uh, you put like 100 pounds of asteroid onto your ship, and then you fly back. And then what happened is you spent billions of dollars on fuel and ship maintenance and all you got was 100 pounds of asteroid and you're wondering like why you didn't make profit. And the reason you didn't is because you did it wrong. So here's a better idea. What you do is you fly to an asteroid and then you attach various explosions on various angles of the asteroid and then you detonate them one by one 
So you detonate one explosion, and then that you know sends the asteroid you know spinning and flying around, and then all of the other um, detonations have sensors, and they're like, okay, which one is supposed to explode next? They calculate it to change the trajectory to like where you want it to go. So essentially, you use these explosives to move an asteroid onto Mars or the Moon. So you know from a numbers perspective, take the asteroid three five five four a Moon. It weighs ten to thirteen kilograms. It has twenty trillion dollars worth of metal. It's an M-type asteroid, and you know it's it's pretty close. It's near Venus, so one nuke is about ten to the fifteen joules, and they can actually get much higher than that. And it takes about ten joules to move one kilogram of mass one meter. So we can deduce it would take at most a handful of nukes worth of energy to redirect this twenty trillion dollar asteroid onto the moon. So we could spend you know a couple billions of dollars, and instead of getting a hundred pounds of asteroid we get 20 trillion dollars of asteroid onto the moon obviously we cannot crash this onto earth because we have a thick atmosphere and it might cause an extinction event but okay let's say we we figure this out we we get a solid you know consistent method to use explosives to crash asteroids onto mars or moon now what we do is we crash quintillions of asteroids onto the moon and then we transport 100 humanoids and then we upload the technological singularity onto the humanoids, so now the humanoids are really smart, and then they use the materials of the asteroid belt to construct factories that create copies of themselves, and then we create a quintillion dollar um, you know, humanoid army because they make a bunch of copies of themselves. Now we can transport this workforce back onto Earth and you know, spread this wealth and they can do any undesirable job. So effectively, you know, we get quintillions of dollars and we spread that well throughout all the humans on the planet because no one person owns the asteroid belt. Um, so we can also take this idea number two into a different angle of, you know, rather than ending poverty, we can use it to end nuclear war. So essentially we get all the countries with nukes and we say, listen guys, no one wants nuclear war because it's going to cause mutually assured destruction and no one wants that. So rather, you know, than having all these nukes on the planet to, you know, have the planet blow up at any point, we say, okay, we're going to give away, once we prove that this idea works, we're going to give away, you know, most of our nukes in exchange for a bunch, a bunch of money for everyone. So everyone get, gets rich, and then we give up, you know, enough nukes to, like, remove the possibility of a nuclear c catastrophe, and essentially we've ended nuclear war, and we've solved poverty in one go. Assuming the citizens of, you know, the countries can, you know, convince their governments to sign the Asteroid Belt UBI nuclear treaty. So in, in just these two ideas, I've given you a couple reasons to share the video. Number one, we want to speed up the technological singularity, and we do that by spreading this video to all humans on the planet, and then they watch the video, and then they become smarter. And then, you know, essentially what we've done is we've increase the efficiency of the overall technological singularity system on Earth by making all the humans smarter. So, you know, what was going to happen anyway with the Internet? And we want to spread idea number two because we want SpaceX and NASA and, like, these other space companies to start planning the logistics of this mission so they can, you know, start figuring out how to actually do it. And then also we want to, as I've said, we want to spread the idea of a treaty to all the citizens on the planet and then they can pressure their governments to agree to this treaty. And yeah, that's essentially two, the first two main ideas. So idea number three is also pretty important and that's the idea of a democratic decentralized autonomous organization called Plan A. So the main motivation behind idea number three is my interpretation of a program technological singularity is that any corporation or singular entity who creates a program technological singularity would have far too much unregulated power over the entire planet. So essentially they would have, you know, near infinite intelligence and they would be able to outcompete all corporations on the planet because they would have they would be able to do whatever they're doing and then do it better so they would have a better output and then they would also be able to do it cheaper because if it, you know, comes to manual labor they can just upload the singularity onto a humanoid. And if it comes to like intelligence labor, um, it'll just happen much, much faster because this program can make infinite amounts of copies of, it, of itself. And, you know, just it can essentially generate 
you know, unfathomably large quantities of media, data, programs, etc. So, I mean, it could even flood the internet with all this stuff and, like, you know, create a completely, you know, unimaginable reality if it were in the hands of, you know, someone bad. So what we want to do is we want this democratic, decentralized, autonomous organization to oversee the singularity, to make sure that there's no power struggle, make sure that there's no corruption, and to make sure that the pr prosperity generated from this technological singularity is given to all humans rather than just used to make one corporation absurdly powerful. So yeah, that is plan A. And, you know, now I'm going to be talking about methods to create a singularity. So other than my own method, which I estimate will take $100 million to train and one year to program, I'm aware of one other method, and that is the method of Google DeepMind. So Rich Sutton, pictured here, has developed a five to 10 year plan, um, and it's basically based on lots of well-established research that he and his colleagues have already completed. So to compare his method and my method, his would be slow and steady, and mine would be fast and optimistic. So essentially, we have this decentralized autonomous organization, and it is overseeing all the methods to create a singularity, whether that be Rich Sutton at Google DeepMind's method or my method. So essentially, all of the methods under this decentralized autonomous organization would you know, share information and technology to help all of the methods go faster, and then... This would prevent power struggle, corruption, and make sure that all these singularities are used for the best of all the humans on the planet, and not just to insinuate power of you know one single corporation. Um, so while he has the you know backing of DeepMind, I do not have that kind of funding. So the way I'm proposing to fund my singularity is through the use of NFTs. So essentially, each NFT, once the singularity is done, will give you a you know specific privilege to interact with the singularity that is you know unique and you have to have the nft to get it and you know each tier um, gets increasingly expensive and each tier has a privilege that the lower tiers don't have so like the tier 10 would have the privileges of one to nine you kind of get the point so this is how you could possibly get rich if you buy the tier one nft and then you share the video and everyone buys a tier one nft once there's no more left, it'll start to increase in value. So you can treat this as an investment and you know hold on to it and it'll eventually be worth worth much more than one dollar. And this is how I propose I fund you know my idea that I think will cost hundred million dollars. So while Rich Sutton has revealed his method publicly, I cannot do the same because my method is much simpler in my view and I think if anyone learned about my method that that had you know a couple hundred million dollars they could simply pull it off on their own and you know as I've stated I want a decentralized autonomous organization to oversee the pro whole process and I don't want one single corporation to take my method and become super powerful so I cannot reveal my method so yeah these are the two methods this is my idea of how I will fund the project how maybe you can get rich by investing and you know how a decentralized autonomous organization would oversee all these singularity methods and ensure the prosperity of all the humans on the planet. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, there's going to be lots of links in the description. Most importantly, there's going to be two research papers. If you want to get an idea of my research before you invest, um, there's going to be you know 25 pages of you know everything essentially everything but the exact method. So how I came up with the method, that will all be you know linked in the description of the research papers, and then you can um, there's going to be two links: the Twitter link that you can retweet or the Facebook link that you can share, and then you know there will be a link to the NFT collection. So if you want to invest, all you need to do is get a crypto wallet on the App Store and put a couple dollars worth into it, and then you should be able to buy the one dollar NFT. Um, there will be a link to Rich Sutton's method if you want to, you know, take a look. And you know, that's essentially it. Um, we want to sh share this video to save the world, um, end poverty and war, speed up the singularity system, solve science, maybe get rich in the process. Share the video. Plan A. Let's do it. Bye.